Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the Counterfactual Stories YouTube channel. In this episode we will talk about one very interesting story from the chess past and that is the Alejandro's death. Before we continue with this episode don't forget to press subscribe button. At the end of the episode we will add some photos from the Alejandro's life. So let's continue. Uh, in 1946, Alexander Alehain, the fourth world champion, was penniless and ailing, ostracized by the chess community. Then, on March 23, the British Chess Federation informed him that preparation for a title match against Botvinnik were completed. The next day, Alehain was found lifeless in his hotel room. There are still questions about his death. First a word about the name. The Russian Alekhin is pronounced Alekhain uh, with a common variant Alukhin in uh, which Alekhain himself did not like. In English the name is usually spelled Alekhain and pronounced in the same way. Alexander Alexandrovich Alekhain was born on November 1st uh, uh, back in the 1892 to a wealthy family in Moscow, Russia. His first notable chess accomplishment was winning the All Russian Amateur Tournament in St. Petersburg in 1909 at the age of 17 with a score of 12 wins, 2 loses and 2 draws. In 1914, after finishing third behind Laskar and Capablanca in St. Petersburg, Alekhain was named one of the five original grandmasters by Tsar Nicholas II. In 1921, he left Soviet Russia and moved to France, becoming a French citizen in 1925. He studied law at the Sorbonne, where he gained the title of doctor. Alekhain Chess's career is too long and spectacular to summarize here. In 1927, he won the World Championship from Capablanca, whom he somewhat controversially avoided playing again, instead defeated, defeating compatriot Efim Bogolyubov twice and then losing the title to the Dutch mathematician Max Uwe in 1935. Alekhain won it back two years later by a large margin and returned it until his death in the 1946. In the years before his death, Alekhain lived in Spain and Portugal, playing tournaments in Nazi Germany or German-occupied uh, countries. He is also given as the author of a number of articles directed against Jewish chess players, which appeared in the Nazi press. After the war, he denied being the author of those articles. During these years, the uh, early 40s, Alekhain was suffering from cirrhosis of the liver, uh, duodentis, and sclerosis of the arterias. He had no proper income and lived from a pittance earned with chess. He was also severely depressed. In the July 1944, Alekhain wrote to the journalist and chess player Juan Fernandez Rua uh, these words. The best part of my life has passed away between two world wars that have laid Europe, Europe waste. Both wars ruined me. With this difference, at the end of the first war, I was 26 years of age, with an unbounded enthusiasm I no longer have. If sometime I write my memoirs, which is uh, very possible, people uh, will realize that chess has been a minor factor in my life. It gave me the opportunity to further an ambition and at the same time convince me of the fulfilling of my ambition. Today I continue to play chess because it occupies my mind and keeps me from brooding and uh, remembering. In 1946, Alekhain was invi invited to play in a tournament in London, but under pressure from American players, Ruben Fine, Arnold Denker and others, because of his wartime record, the invitation was withdrawn. He resumed the negotiation with FIDE for a match against, Bo for a match against Botvinnik, which uh, was to take place in England under the auspice of the British Chess Federation. The BFC confirmed that an agreement had been met and arrangements made in a telegram delivered to Alekhain on March 23, uh, 1946. Alekhain was in a hotel in Estoril, Portugal. He was found dead in his room on the morning of March 24. The date of his death is usually given on March 
and this may be a result of assuming he had died on the previous evening. The date of his grave notes March 25 uh, and the cause of death given was either by his choking on a piece of meat or by a heart attack uh, through the exact sense of circumstances, circumstances remain to this day a matter of debate. Associated Press reported at the time that Ali Khan's body had been found by a waiter when he brought in breakfast. The waiter said that Ali Khan was slumped at the table and that the supper served on the previous day had not been touched. Although uh, his napkin was already tucked in. This is not what the picture dispects and has led to the conspiracy theories that have signs, uh, since then flourished. The main ones believe that Ali Khan either killed himself or was murdered. In his 1975 book Ali Khan, Alexander Ali Khan, Soviet Grandmaster Alexander Kotl describes the circumstances of Ali Khan's death as follow. Hopelessly ill, abandoned by all, and rejected by people together with whom he had trodden a great path and who now did not even wish to see him and question him personally, Adelheim was slowly dying in a small room of the hotel park, half closed for the winter in Astoril. He had no prospects, no means, and no friends to support him. He either spent the time in bed or else paced about the room like a lion in a cage. One day he phoned me. Uh, writes a friend. I have absolutely no money, say the fading world champion with difficulty. I need just a few escudos to buy a cigarette. This line, uh, lioness is uh, killing me. I must have, I must feel life around me. I have already worn out the floorboards in my room. Take me somewhere. A Belgian violinist named Newman who had lived in the same hotel as Ayakhan, had rushed to the room that morning when a waiter told him Ayakhan was dead. You can go in there, said the policeman, bar uh, boring my way. We are waiting for a forensic specialist. We have to establish that that was from the natural cause. What? Yes, you may have a look. I opened the door. The curtains were still drawn and the light was on. Although outside it was sunny. On the table were plates, while to the side on a support for a suitcase was a chessboard with the pieces set out. My friend was sitting in an armchair. I stood still listening intentionally to my violin. In 1999, Canadian Grandmaster Kevin Spraggett voiced the opinion that there was something suspicious about the official version of death by heart attack or choking. What is wrong with the official story? I mean, apart from the fact that if a normal person was sitting down and choking, he would get up and become quite frenetic, possibly even overturning the board and pieces in the process. The doctor who wrote the official death certificate, it's Dr. Antonio Ferreira, just by chance an avid chess player himself, later told friend that friends that Alejandro's body was found on the street in front of his hotel room. He had been shot, he said that government pressure had forced him to complete the death certificate that is now exist. Portugal, uh, Portugal was neutral during the Second World War and might have wanted to avoid any controversy. According to well-placed sources, including Spassky, who is married to a French woman who worked in the diplomatic service, the French resistance created a super-secret death squad after the Second World War to deal appropriately with those people on a blacklist who had collaborated not too willingly uh, with the uh, German Nazis. Once France were overrun by Germany, and apparently the list was not less than 200,000 names. Correspondence of Alechain shortly before his untimely demise mentioned that he felt he was being followed. Alexander Alechain's initially was AA, so that would put him at the top of any list. Alejan died within a day or two of the British Chess Federation voting to hold the Botvinnik Alejan match. So, if there was an assassin, uh, then he had to move quickly, since uh, Alejan was about to go to England. We have not been able to find independent corroboration of the Ferreira's alleged re reaction of his original forensic report, but we have located a copy of the original autopsy document, which is not in very good condition. A picture of it was sent uh, by Lawrence Totaro of Las Vegas, Nevada, who owned the document and then sold it to Alejandro memorabilist Guy Gignac of Canada. 
we have retained the size of the original picture as submitted by Totaro, enhancing the content slightly to make it more readable. And this uh, document I will uh, present to you in this video at the end. Uh, the following text fragments are discriminably in the bow pictures of the report. So I will now uh, read to you. Hotel Hafnia, Copenhagen, 5, September 8, 1967. I was present at the Alexander Ayahain's, uh, then three dots, which took place in the department, three dots, of the medical school of three dots, University of Lisbon. Ayahain had been found dead in his room in Estoril Hotel under conditions that were regarded as suspicious and indicated the need of an autopsy to ascertain the cause of death. The autopsy revealed that Ayahain's cause of death of asphyxia due to a piece of meat, three dots, part of meal, with a large in the larynx. There was no evidence whatsoever that full play had taken place, suicide, suicide, suicide nor homicide. There were other diseases to which his sudden unexpected death could be attributed, signed Antonio J. Ferreira, MD. The report is reconstructed in full in Pablo Moran's book, Agony of a Chess Genius. I was present at Alexander Ayahain's autopsy, which took place in the Department of Legal Medicine of the Medical School of the University of Lisbon. Ayahain had been found dead in his room in an astral hotel under conditions that were regarded as suspicious and they gave the need to autopsy of certain the cause of death. Uh, this is actually the piece from the book that I that is uh, referred to the previous uh, document. After his death, Ayahain's body remained unburied in Astoria for a period of three weeks. Then the Portuguese Chess Federation had him interrupted in Humble's Sefulche in the Astoria uh, Cemetery. Only a few chess friends were present. His remains were forgotten until 1956, the 10th anniversary of his death, when Fide, together with the Russian and French Chess Federation, transferred them to Cemetery du Montparnasse, Paris. They placed a red granite monument with his image in Carrara, marble at the head of his tomb. The inscription on the grave says, This monument was erected on March 25, 1956 by FIDE International Chess Federation, Folklore Guard, President, uh, President Sweden, Vlacheslav Rogozin, Vice President Russia, Marcel Berman, Vice President France, Mikhail Botvinnik, World Champion USSR, Glan Carlo del Verne, Italia, and Pierre Derman, Belgium. The text on the tombstone give, uh, gives March 25, 1946 as the day of his death, not March 24. Buried with Eichhain and his fourth wife, whom he married in the 1934, for Grace uh, Wishart, an English widow, whom he had met when she won a minor chess tournament. She received one of his books as a prize and asked him to sign it. Grace Wishart was 16 years so older than her husband and survived him by 20 years. On December 26, in 1999, there was a hurricane in Paris, which did considerable damage to the city. Adekhan's grave in Montparnasse, Montparnasse Cemetery, where Lev Polugaevsky is also buried. The headstone monument was blown over, uh, shattered and fell on the main gravestone. I will put some pictures of this also at the end of the video. Uh, so, at the end, uh, as a conclusion, we can say that uh, that death of uh, Ayahain was probably intentional and some people suspect that uh, it probably came from the Israeli Secret Service. Uh, these documents say that it's maybe a French resistance uh, I guess it uh, needed to pass some time to find a real evidence, but until that, until that uh, I hope that you uh, like this episode. Don't forget to press up, the press subscribe button and don't forget to write some comments below. Thank you so much and see you soon. Bye.